This video is all about the IPv4 header and its fields. Let's jump right in and start. The size of the base IPv4 header is 20 bytes and the size of the options field, if present, can get up to 40 bytes. This means that the IPv4 header size can vary from 20 bytes up to 60 bytes. Let's dive in and have a detailed look at these fields. First up is the version field, and this one is very easy. It basically specifies the IP version being used. 4 for IPv4 and 6 for IP version 6. Next is the IHL field or the internet header length field, which is the number of 32-bit words in the IPv4 header plus any options if they are present anyways. And here in my illustration, a 32-bit word is each row as highlighted. Five for the base header, which is equal to 20 bytes, like we mentioned, and up to 10 32-bit words for the options, which means that the options can get up to 40 bytes. So because this is also a 4-bit field, if you do the maths, the IPv4 header is limited to a maximum of 15 32-bit words, which equals to 60 bytes. Next up is the differentiated services and explicit congestion notification fields. Basically, without DLs, all traffic will be handled the same. Even you personally, I believe you will tolerate delays in loading websites or downloading files, but you will not accept choppy voice or video calls. The DS field enables different service classes by marking datagrams for priority handling. ECN uses two bits to signal congestion and basically ECN aware routers set these bits when congested, prompting protocols like TCP to inform the sender to slow down, which eventually helps manage the network traffic and prevents packet loss due to overload. Next up is the total length field, which is the total length of the IPv4 datagram in bytes. Because these are 16-bit field, again, if you do the maths to the power of 16, the maximum size of an IPv4 datagram, including the header itself, is 65,535 bytes. So using this field and the IHL field, we can know where the data portion of the datagram starts and also its length. The next set of fields are mostly used for fragmentation. First one up is the identification field, which helps identify each datagram sent by an IPv4 host. All the fragments of a fragmented datagram have the same identification number, which will be used to identify these fragments on the receiving side. The second field is the flags field, which signals whether fragmentation should be done or not, and whether more fragments are available when processing. So the first bit is reserved and is not used, always set to zero. The next bit, the DF bit or the do not fragment bit, as the word implies, means that if it's set to zero, the datagram can be fragmented. When it's set to one, the datagram cannot be fragmented. Then the last bit, which is the MF bit or more fragments, indicates whether there are more fragments to come, right? When it's one, it means that there are more fragments to follow. When it's zero, it means that either no more fragments will follow or the packet was not fragmented in the first place. Finally, we have the fragment offset field, which is just used to indicate the starting position of the data in the fragment in relation to the start of the data in the original packet. Next up is the time to leave field or TTL, which basically sets an upper limit on the number of routers through which a datagram can pass. So the sender initializes this field to some value, for example 64, and each router that forwards the datagram decrements the value by 1. When the value reaches zero, the datagram is discarded and the sender is notified with an ICMP message. So by the way, I have a question for you. Why is the field called time to leave 
and the functionality is not time related in any way. So let me know in the comment section down below. Next up is the protocol field, which contains a number indicating the type of data found in the payload portion of the datagram. The most common values are 6 for TCP and 17 for UDP. Here's a list of protocol numbers you may be familiar with and you can find a full list from the IANA website. I'll also leave a link in the description down below. Next up is the header checksum field and the algorithm used in this field is a 16-bit mathematical sum used to determine whether the received header matches the one that was sent. And the key thing to note here is the checksum is only done on the IPv4 header and not on the entire payload. So right now I'll not go over the maths of how this is done. However, speaking of math, we can do some basic math on the next two fields. So the two fields I'm talking about are the source and destination IP address fields. The source address shows where the packet came from and the destination address shows where the packet is headed to. Both of them are 32-bit values for IPv4, usually identifying a single interface on a device. Finally, an honorable mention goes to the options field, and I say honorable because this field is rarely used nowadays. It's variable in length, up to a maximum of 40 bytes. The initial intention was to add extra capabilities to the data packet when necessary. But nowadays, attackers can leverage some of the options to initiate attacks. Hence, most networks will filter out packets with IPv4 options. And that's it. I hope you've learned something new and it's been informative. See you in the next one.